Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game to the Com video, we're going to be discussing AMD utilizing GDDR6 memory for the upcoming Navi graphics cards. Now, I was actually supposed to be taking today off, and therefore today's video is somewhat impromptu. However, a number of you have messaged me via social media, so I figured I'd be doing this very video. However, you might be hearing a bit of audio crackle in this video. That's because my normal setup is unavailable at the moment. I'm basically using a different PC than normal, and this one for some reason does crackle with this mic. I'm not quite sure what the issue is. I don't know if it's like some driver conflict or whatever. So hopefully it's not too bad, but um, because I just torn down all my Threadripper uh, stuff to send it back to MSI for the review, and of course with the G uh, GTX 1080 Ti as well going back, plus some other bits and pieces, I just don't really have the time or willpower today, to be honest with you, to set up uh, my normal uh, testing slash recording rig. Anyway, um, so this rumor originates from the website WCCF Tech. Now, I don't have any confirmation of whether this is genuine or not. From what I understand, there was another rumor which uh, circulating a few days ago that there was a LinkedIn page from an AMD engineer and they basically claimed that they were working, AMD that, that is, on a GDDR6 memory controller. However, the profile has been, and that is the LinkedIn profile, has been somewhat suspiciously absent. So don't take that as confirmation. However, according to WCCF Tech, they say that they've got uh, sources which tell them this is genuine. Obviously, once again, I can't confirm whether this is or not. Now, from what the rumors tell us, for very high-end graphics cards, we'll be seeing AMD sticking with HBM2. Or when Navi finally is introduced, it will most likely uh, evolve to HBM3. Don't forget, it, with Navi, it says it's using a next generation of uh, memory. However, the exact details around that are somewhat sketchy. It's most likely that the next generation of NVIDIA graphics cards, whether that's going to be Volta for consumers or whether that's going to be Ampere, although we've already discussed those rumors before. So, AMD adopting GDDR6 for some of its uh, graphics cards is not particularly surprising. After all, GDDR6 has an awful lot of memory bandwidth which it can bring to the table. I mean, you could do the maths yourself on this, but the fastest speed which GDDR6 operates at is 16 Gbps. So, if you were to take a 256-bit memory bus, that brings you up to 512 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. In case you're wondering, by the way, how you can do that math for yourself, you'd simply type in 16,000, which represents the GBPS, times 256, and then divide that by 8, and that gives you the gigabytes per second. And then, of course, you can simply change those figures however you would like. So, for example, if you wanted to make that more conservative, 14 GBPS on, for example, a 192-bit bus, you get the idea. In short, for devices which aren't particularly power sensitive, in other words, where GDDR6 uh, power requirements are not going to really push it above what uh, AMD feel is going to be detrimental. For example, one of the reasons that Vega 64 and 56 were so instrumental um, in pushing HBM2 is because the power requirements for GDDR6, oh sorry, GDDR5, would have probably added about 100 watts onto the GPU, which obviously, given Vega's architecture, is not really going to fly. However, uh, GDDR6 operates at slightly lower volts. It runs at 1.35 compared to about 1.5 of today's memory, and that obviously is going to reduce power consumption. Plus, on top of that, because it runs at faster memory speeds as well, it also means you can get away with a smaller memory bus, and also because you have a larger capacity uh, DRAM, that also means you don't need so much DRAM, uh, sorry, so many DRAM modules on board, so uh, in other words, you can probably get away with it, especially for mid-range cards. So, for example, uh, the equivalent of, let's say, a GTX 1070 with um, Navi is probably not going to need HBM2 unless it's for, let's say, a mobile device, that type of thing. And a small thing for a lot of people to who didn't actually know this, a small little uh, tidbit if you will, 
AMD, well, actually technically ATI back in the day, were instrumental in actually putting out GDDR3, believe it or not. It was actually originally designed by ATI Technologies, and then, of course, was adopted as a JDEX standard later on. However, uh, another weird piece of uh, trivia. You can't make this stuff up sometimes. It's absolutely bizarre how uh, tech works. But despite the fact it was actually designed by ATI, the first graphics card which was actually using... Uh, this memory was the NVIDIA GeForce FX 5700 Ultra, and this was back in early 2004, and it was actually using uh, GDDR2 back in the day. So then the next card was the 6800 Ultra, and then finally uh, we started to see ATI push the card with, let's say, the X800, and uh, then, of course, we saw PlayStation 3 adopting the technology, and so on, and so on, and so on. So do I think this is AMD abandoning HBM3, HBM2, or whatever? No, of course not. Um, I, I think that there are going to be certainly some cards which just don't make sense for GDDR. I'm um, sorry, for HBM2 uh, two or 3, because cost is still rather expensive, because it's not just the cost of the actual memory. Another issue is the interposer itself, and it's just... There's a lot more chance that something's going to go pear-shaped when you're actually creating a silicon. In other words, the risk of uh, dead silicon is considerably higher when you start factoring in. Also, you've got to ship the HBM and then the actual GPU itself, and then that needs to be assembled. And it's just... It, I'm not saying it was a mistake for HBM2 when it came to Vega. However, I do feel that there's definitely going to be an awful lot of GPUs on uh, the mainstream, possibly going up to the high end, which will definitely be using GDDR6, just because in those usage scenarios, it just makes a lot of sense. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. As I said, it's been a bit impromptu. Um, I, today, I'm having a bit of an easy day, if I'm honest with you. I'm doing just a little bit of work, putting together the uh, GTX 1080 Ti. That's the gaming trio, um graphics card we actually got from MSI so I'm just putting together those final benchmarks it's actually a really nice card to be honest uh, so I put in together those benchmarks which is almost done so hopefully over the next day or two that will be live and to be honest I'm just trying to relax a little bit because uh, I've just been hammered with the flu and colds and all that stuff so I just figure a couple of days just to kind of relax and unwind is probably a good thing anyway uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video as I said take care of yourselves bye for now